Give me a three and a two and a one. of november november 15th 2020 uh my name is jeff who's your bear that's right i am your bear i'm damon i don't brew the tea i just serve it and that makes me gary everyone else is thinking it and i just say it welcome to comes out of the bear podcast we've been determined on like episode number 577 and uh I don't know where I was going with that whole Ides of November thing, honestly. I don't either. Ides of March. Ides is like the 15th, the middle of the month. Right. So. And I just thought to myself, like, what if Jeff did that every time we recorded on the 15th of a month? But we don't do it very often, so... It's not worthy of a bingo card. <laughs> I mean, maybe it would just be one of those really rare spots. Mm. <laughs> what, like 069? Because <laughs> that bingo. actually comes up more often than people think. Well, on a bingo card, people. Yes. On a bingo card. Yes. If you know how to play bingo, that's what I was talking about. For the rest of you perverted <laughs> fuckers out there, I'm well aware there's a pandemic going on and there's probably not that much 69ing. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> and this is a weird year, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Let's Just eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Talk about food and uh, talk about food that we normally eat with a big old gathering of our family, which this year I strongly recommend you just don't do <laughs> yeah. or, or do will, virtually. <laughs> I will say right now, um, my family has already decided to cancel Thanksgiving for the year, um, mostly due to the fact that our, our host who normally hosts us um um the wife had a new baby so they're kind of like no <laughs> like <laughs> we love you all mean it but yeah we really rather not throw all that risk out right there yeah so right so so the big thing is, is, is let's start off with this thanksgiving gatherings should be done virtually only Please. I, well, you know, the, the basic CDC principle here in the U.S. is, like, stick with your household. Right. Yeah. So if you happen to be a multi-generational home, Where are so be it. Together? Then sure, great. Right. Yeah, but, exactly. you know, like, my two families, one of them has definitively canceled Thanksgiving for the big family. They, they send in a text, the host, the normal host, my aunt and uncle said, blah, blah, blah due to the pandemic and, you know, multiple medical issues for different family members, we are not going to have Thanksgiving at our house. Um, you, We wish you all the best with your Thanksgiving in your homes, like, mm -hmm. uh, which was just kind of a way of like, you know, <laughs> it, they, this was not their intention because they're, because they're good God fearing people. But right. the subtext I read was, bitch, keep your ass at home, like stuff your own turkey, eat your stuff over there. Don't you come to my house. Like, yeah. <laughs> There will be no Thanksgiving for you here. Right. <laughs> We're not saying no right. Thanksgiving. Just not here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like at the end of the night at the bar when it's last call. And they're like, it's great that you had a good time. You just can't have a good time here anymore. Take the party elsewhere. Out the door. Tick, tick, buh, buh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You, you, you can you can continue to stay uh, stay up all night. You just get to stay up all night here. So I can't yeah. remember what is the, whatever that that lyrics closing time is. I was trying to do it off the top of my head. Anyways, so remember, a mask is better than a ventilator. Home is better than ICU. Prevention is better than a cure. It's not curfew. It's care for you. You are very special. So that's a, a little meme that popped up on my Facebook feed that I decided to share. Jeff, share. you have to play you have to play the, the thing. 
The thing? With the thing. One down, one down. This one? Okay. <laughs> See, this is the reason why I share that window. <laughs> <laughs> the one time a, a sound clip was relevant. <laughs> <laughs> and we could call it out. We could be like that one, that one right there. Could you call that one? Well, they're not anyway. numbered, so I couldn't even call out the number. I was like, oh, like, you know, it's, it's named. Well, I didn't want to name it, like, because then that that and was kind of obviously the purpose named. of uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Anyway, anyways, moving on. <laughs> Let's talk about so food. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. Did you know well, okay, that Wikipedia so... has an entire article on Thanksgiving dinner? I mean, I know now. I'm like, not surprised. It's, it's not just part, like, if you go to the Thanksgiving article, it, it you know, gives you a more short, shorter blurb, but there's this big old, a big old uh, uh, article on Wikipedia for Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. Anyways, sorry. The more you know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah. Yay. I mean, it's good. Anyway. You were, you were saying I'm sorry. <sighs> Gary? Well, so, I mean, one of the things is there is an article we're going to have it linked. It's about um, Thanksgiving dinner on Wikipedia. And within it, it says that Thanksgiving in the United States and Canada um, is centered around a large meal. And I was like, I know that they have Thanksgiving in Canada, but it's not the same time as ours. So I was intrigued. And if you go through that, like, there's actually a link to Thanksgiving Canada. And it explains a little bit more about their holiday, which I'm going to read about after the show. So, mm. um, so we've talked about Thanksgiving before. We have talked about our favorite foods at Thanksgiving um, in various different episodes, given mm. that it is the year 2020. And everything is kind of topsy-turvy in our lives and we were just discussing about like not having large family gathering get togethers. Um, I was already thinking about this because I was invited. <laughs> I have been invited, I think to one family function because so far the other family hasn't canceled yet. Um, mm -mm. And two different friends have asked what I'm doing for Thanksgiving, which I find interesting. Um, and I remember, was it last year or the year before there was this, um, Friendsgiving as a concept um, mm -hmm. in which you basically collect your friends together as opposed to, you know, um, having a traditional Thanksgiving with family. Mm -hmm. And I think the concept that I had heard about was it was meant to be for people who don't have a family to go to. Mm hmm so I think yeah. that that's a possibility, but you just, given, you know, COVID, need to be careful about your selection and obviously yeah. not a large group gathering of any sort. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to be mixed and it's not your traditional family environment, I thought we might talk a little bit about the food that you might prepare, either just for yourself, like because I'm single and I live alone, mm -hmm. or like if you go with friends what our thoughts are about that. Do you think it's, does it make sense to have an entire turkey or are certain things in our American diet considered a staple no matter what? Do you know what I mean? Like you expect that to be on the table because gosh darn it, it's Thanksgiving and you want to have a trip to fan carb coma afterwards. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That is a good idea. So I will go ahead and start mm -hmm. and I will say, one of the things that I think is a tradition and is almost expected in any Thanksgiving meal, if you use the word Thanksgiving in the name or description or describing of your meal, turkey is and should be a part of that meal. Like, point blank period. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Thanksgiving turkey it is it is synonymous it is and, like that should kind of be the thing and to point it is just general turkey not necessarily whole turkey uh yeah. or 14 pound turkey you yeah. know it it it's just turkey so you, you would yeah. have that factor and then from there 
you can bridge mm-hmm. off of things. So like like maybe if it's only one person for for a single folk, instead of buying a whole turkey, you get a turkey breast. Mm-hmm. Or hell, if it's I mean two people, like like you could have a turkey breast, or you can have. Um, if you're not a fan of the white meat of the turkey, you can have a turkey thigh um, or, or um, something along those lines. Um, I don't know how readily available separately those are. I'm not, a, I don't usually grocery shop, so. <laughs> if you have a connection with somebody who works at a medieval fair, you might be able to figure out where you get your big old turkey leg. Turkey leg, yeah, that's true. That is very true. Um, um, uh, yeah. The reason I had chuckled a moment ago, Jeff, is because you were like, or if you're single, and I was waiting for you to say, pop that frozen meal in the microwave <laughs> with, the, with the turkey breast slice and, the, you know, the little stuffing slash dressing and the gravy and the corn and the mashed potato, maybe a little, like, pie, apple, you know, compote thing in the corner and you're good. Like, you know. yeah. I, I believe they have a brownie in that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me find it. <laughs> well, it depends on who you're going through. I mean, you can go through banquet, Marie calendars. Yeah, Marie uh, calendar. I mean, I usually end up doing a hungry man for those. It usually has a crumb bowl. Oh. I think the the Marie calendar one. Oh, See, now we're all going to look up that. turkey frozen dinner. I, I'm literally going into my Instacart. <laughs> I, I need it. I need to do grocery shopping, and this is how I grocery shop. Uh, so I already got in here. Uh, a couple of staples that I that I remember needing uh, a box of family size triscuits and hummus because that's nice. a snacky thing for me. Uh, I, I I'm I'm getting some cooking spray and um, uh, I'm getting ten pounds worth of uh, ground beef because I stock up. And plus, a lot of the casseroles use that I make use ground mm-hmm. beef, so might as well. Huh. Oh, and, and some some more popcorn. So nice. now, because I've been doing this lately as kind of like, because I've decided to kind of like make things go and make it a little bit easier for me for foods is uh, that while I've been uh, 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 sheltering in place for all intents and purposes, I've been making casseroles, which would last me a few days. Days for each casserole. So I cook once and then I'm good for a couple of days. But in between times, sometimes it's like, okay, I finished the casserole last night and I got lunch, but I'm working and I don't want to be, I, I have to do, do work and I need something that's quick. So I get some frozen dinners and pot pies and, you know, s- things that are quick and easy to make, mm-hmm. relatively quick and easy to make. And one of those it's... happens to be the uh, frozen dinner. Mm-hmm. And I usually go with the Swanson uh, Hungry Man. Well, so that's what's funny because I'm looking up all of these frozen turkey meals online. The Hungry Man is a roasted carby white meat turkey with mashed potatoes, gravy, mixed vegetables, seasoned stuffing, and apple cranberry compote. Ah. Or Banquet has um, a turkey meal, they call it, which is turkey with gravy and dressing, cream mashed potatoes, and sweet peas. Which mm-hmm. I am greatly perplexed by the peas at Thanksgiving. Um, this is just me. <laughs> Marie Calendars has roast turkey breast and stuffing with uh, creamy mashed potatoes. Uh, and then I like how it says add vegetables with a savory turkey gravy. So they don't tell you what the vegetables are. In the picture on the box, it is green beans and carrot like shards, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, yeah, which, which is me. the traditional like frozen meal. Because right. they're, yeah. Stouffer's has a roast turkey breast with homestyle gravy and mashed potatoes and stuffing. That's it. No veggie. Sorry. Uh, now, it's Great funny. Value has this thing that is greatly intriguing me. And it sounds like something that Jeff would make and my grandmother would make of the leftovers. And it's called turkey and dressing bake. Oh. Which is tender white turkey, savory dressing, cream sauce topped with cheddar cheese. In other words, it's a casserole. Type mm, like, from fair like, top yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and one of the things I think I did this uh, one Thanksgiving when in, when I wasn't going to my uh, second family who lives up in Cedar Park uh, for Thanksgiving. I actually made my easy cheesy chicken bake, which I could easily replace 
the chicken, chicken turkey. with turkey. Yeah, that's uh, fair. Although I think I just used chicken for this one, just because it was you know, easier and that's what it is grabbed and such. But mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and I did the exact. So that was kind of like that style. I think I, then I added, made some mashed potatoes and had, got some cranberry sauce. So I'm waiting. Why is it taking so long to load? My internet's being super slow. Uh, or, <laughs> this is too funny. Marie Callender's has a Kentucky inspired turkey, bacon, and stuffing bowl. Oh, no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> David had a oh. clutch pearls. He was like, "Girl, what?" <laughs> that don't. That don't. No. Um, you said turkey, bacon, and stuffing bowl. So it's a wait. Get get this Swiss cheese mornay sauce over turkey breast with tomato and bacon and herb stuffing, herb season stuffing, in a bowl. Um. I'm thinking that's um, a pass for Damon. Yeah, yeah that's. I don't. Ooh, I don't. Uh, one more time. Sorry, I was looking at something else. What was it? <laughs> well, it's currently out of stock at Walmart, but it's called. Uh, it has. It's Marie Callender's Kentucky inspired turkey, bacon, and don't stuffing. I don't even know what that means. Oh, I get it now. This, I'm uh, reading the description. This oh. meal is a delicious take on the Kentucky hot brown sandwich. Uh, it features roast turkey, bacon, herb seasoned stuffing, all smothered in a creamy Swiss cheese Mornay sauce. However, in the description of the product, they left out that one of the ingredients apparently is tomato. Like, mm. some people don't, y'all gotta, y'all gotta like be you're right by You that. gotta talk about that shit, you know. Like I don't like to me. I mean, I don't like this period, but yeah. um <laughs> but the but the the turkey the the added the, the tomatoes definitely puts it on my no because I'm not a big fan of like certain I mean sometimes tomato is just like eh for me. At least it's but it, it is with like the ketchup tomato sauce sort of things. It's just when it's actually yeah, and like I can eat tomatoes. like, you know, yeah, I can eat it in like a marinara. I could eat like tomatoes sometimes on a um, like a taco kind of thing. Just I don't usually put a lot of it, but I can't do like a whole bunch of tomato. It just doesn't sit right with me. And just reading what it said now, now that it is inspired by the Kentucky hot brown sandwich, okay, now it makes sense to me. Right. Why it's saying Kentucky inspired? It it still doesn't mean I'm going to eat it, but it 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 at least I get that now because I know what a cop brown is. I'm from Kentucky, so I know what that is and I get that idea. Um, but mm, no, um, so, I think I'll I'll pass on that. Link in the in the Skype chat so y'all could like click the picture to see this uh, Frankenstein. Um, oh, I I, I I was looking at it. I happened to be <laughs> looking at Marie Callender's earlier. <laughs> Um, I, I don't, I don't, it, uh, I mean, oh, um, it's like delicious, honestly. I mean, it, and, and here's the thing, it, it probably is, you know, when you think about the things in there, stuffing, yeah, turkey, yeah, like cheese, sauce, yes, bacon, mm, you know, right. um, tomato, man, eh. but you know, like, and then you kind of put it all together, like, okay, it probably tastes good. To me, however, it, it 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 like the the idea behind it has put me off. So well, I had to be particularly hungry or pretty fucking hungry to be like, let's grab that. <laughs> and so make that. Here's, here's here's I think the final judgment on the Marie Calendar's website. It gets two point four out of five stars. So I think that helps. And done. Um, <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it. Uh, but again, so we've been going around on the, the turkey aspect of things. Um, it's very funny. Well, I knew about this. 
I think a few days ago that we were going to be talking about this. Just so happened that yesterday I went to um, our leather group, um, did a small um, Thanksgiving dinner inspired gathering um, just because we haven't met in so long. And um, it was um, one of our legacy members came in, uh, was coming in from out of town and she made her and her daughter made the meal. And I was a little surprised that we had both turkey and ham. So I thought that was going to come up today in conversation. Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? Like, because I will tell you what, what happened. I'll tell you what, like, for me, like, it's usually turkey for Thanksgiving. And that's it. Like, we don't, we don't have another meat. No other meat is on the table <laughs> unless it's like, in some in a side dish like the green beans with ham hock like that like that's kind of the thing like there is not another like main meat served um with the with this kind of meal um ham was reserved specifically for christmas um we would have ham for christmas we would not have it for for thanksgiving no ma'am no T so here, here's my philosophy. Okay, so obviously you have the traditional, which is, you know, which is just just turkey. That's that's your primary protein, the the main dish, uh, the the center as it said in the Thanksgiving dinner article, centerpiece and everything. The thing is for me when it comes to to foods is is I like having the elements, so. If turkey is a centerpiece, and then you also have ham, I would also like to see bacon, and maybe some beef, and maybe just basically <laughs> a heart attack on a on a plate. Uh, you know, we're gonna go this whole like turducken sort of route, except maybe not necessarily put put ham inside the turkey and uh, with uh, inside the ham is is some bacon or, or something like that. You know, some other conglomeration. You know, if I'm going to do something like that, I'm going to have it separated. It's going to be break, broken out. I'm going to have turkey. I'm going to have ham. I think it's brilliant. And one of the reasons is because I love chicken cordon bleu. Which is chicken stuffed with ham. Stuffed with. Uh, uh, with some, like... Uh, yeah, Swiss cheese. Yeah. Usually a Swiss. Yeah, Swiss. yeah. It's delicious. So, I mean... I mean to me, turkey and chicken, while still different products, different tastes, they're very interchangeable without much of a difference or, or you know, a slight change of flavor to, to kind of spice it up. But in general, if I could replace, I could play with turkey with ham or turkey with chicken, chicken with ham. And I find that chicken and ham work well together. So if I have chicken and ham, be like, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't believe in necessarily having to have the exact thing. There's elements that I want in a Thanksgiving dinner, mm -hmm. but it, those elements don't necessarily have to be exactly the same, or there can be additions to those elements. So do I have the turkey? Do I have the cranberry sauce? Do I have the mashed potatoes? Do I have the green bean casserole? Uh, uh, you know that sort of thing. Just having those those elements is what gives me Thanksgiving, and then everything else is just bonus. Although I've never found a green bean casserole which really has has a really surprising, well tasty flavor. It's good. It's fine. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, um, for my families in my growing up turkey is the protein for thanksgiving like and that's mm -hmm. it however i find more often than not christmas as a as a you know family gathering for both sides was ham and sometimes turkey um mm -hmm. But I'm game for any, you know, kind of change up. Like I was looking at some articles online and one of them is um, uh, called 12 Thanksgiving Proteins That Aren't Turkey. 
Mm -hmm. um, from a few years ago. And the very first one on the list really appeals to me, and it's garlic roast beef. Mm -hmm. So it's a roast of beef that gets sliced. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm good for that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they, these are it includes see, two things that I absolutely love. <laughs> Damn so, you, Gary. Well, no, I mean, it's like, Damn. you know, or another item on the list is bacon and apple wrapped pork tenderloin. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you had me with the, the garlic roast beef. Like, okay. I, could, I could see that being a thing. But then when you got to the bacon wrapped pork tenderloin, I'm kind of like, see, now we're trying to be fancy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like. I don't need all the fancy shit because it's all going down like the plate is going to get engulfed, like, in, you know, <laughs> inhaled. So it doesn't necessarily need to, it needs to be tasty ish, but it doesn't really need to be fancy. I mean, and, and I, let's, let's be honest. I don't disagree with your, with your perspective, David. I just think, like, because <laughs> Jeff was asking the question, you know, like, what do we kind of look at that and what do we think of or what do we expect? And are we good with like mixing things? My feeling kind of about the holidays is, like, it's just bringing folks together and, like, you know, a camaraderie. And I'm more of a, I'm much more of a pitch-in, potluck, crock-pot, like, um, Sunday dinner grouping kind of, like, person. Mm. I, I've i liked that, you know, that there's a variety of things. Sometimes you don't quite know what you're getting. You get to try different stuff you haven't seen before. You get to see the same dish that this person brings to every freaking function for 10 years because it's the only damn thing they know how to make. Um, <laughs> or people stop at KFC or someplace and bring, you know, the traditional whatever because they don't know how to cook. Um, Here's a bucket of wings. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, you know, that that, you know, there's something for that. And I don't think there's anything wrong. Um, I do want to circle back to the turkey thing. When we, and it wasn't for Thanksgiving, but it's always this time of year and I think of it. So for me personally around Thanksgiving and probably especially this year, because I'm not going to be doing Thanksgiving with families. Like just yesterday, I was thinking to myself while I was out shopping, I was like, should I buy a turkey? I've never made a whole turkey because mm -hmm. I haven't needed to. But it appealed to me on this one viewpoint because I was like, oh, but if I cooked a whole turkey, like I would have a lot of, you know, um, turkey, obviously, mm -hmm. but I have a pressure cooker. I could make stock. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I could, I could do some things like and, and yeah. really to make it last. So like the idea kind of appealed to me, but the thing when I think of when, especially when it comes to Turkey is I know everybody thinks it's the traditional, you know, bird and it's golden brown and it's gorgeous and blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm going to give you guys a link to a product on Walmart's website that goes to show my poor background. Oh, um, Lord. Because, uh, oh, that's an awfully long link. Anyways. <laughs> uh, so. Oh, I no. Up... <laughs> what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Keep going. Keep talking. I Keep talking. This. Oh, this wow. was a, a traditional thing that we would buy. It's called turkey loaf. And it is like meatloaf, only it's all turkey. Um, there are actually two kinds you can get from frozen. You can get it all white or you can get a white and dark. Um, it is made from turkey. It may have some soy protein mixed in with it. Um, it's frozen and already in its own like loaf pan and then you like let it defrost uh, and or put it in frozen in the oven and you cook it through and then you can slice it. It comes with its own gravy. Um, it is not the most healthy thing on the face of the earth. I will admit that. <laughs> David, you okay? <laughs> Keep going. But this is this is like I don't know how else to say it. This is this is this is poor people food. Like this is, you know, not that I'm rich or anything now, but you know, when when you grew up on staples, and to be fair, you know, in the seventies and eighties, we did not have the mega Lamarts of grocery that we do now, you know, to be able to mm -hmm. buy such a variety of foods. Like this is kind of the thing that I think of. And I, um, one of the people that I dated, like I made a whole thing about how I was on a hunt for this stuff and it was around Thanksgiving. And I was so frustrated because I couldn't find it in stores. And everybody was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, it's like a frozen turkey loaf. And everybody's like, just kind of confused. Cause I think they thought I meant like, 
like ground turkey, mm-hmm. you know, you buy from the deli or the meat section in mm-hmm. a loaf mm-hmm. style, or I turn it into a loaf. And I was like, no, 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 that's no, it's a no, it's, it's an actual thing. It's a thing. Apparently, it's a thing. I take it you've never seen it before, David. <laughs> I have never seen it before either. <laughs> no, and I'm and I and and <laughs> I'm sitting here like grimacing because it's just like I the I, the idea of it offends me. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I guess it's a thing. I mean it can be a thing, and I'm sure it's a thing, and I'm sure people really like it. I would just rather have like like just like processed turkey breast. Like like pull out a, a, a sandwich, go to the deli section and or not deli section, just go to the like um words that live in my head. Oh, what's it called? The, the well the meat section. Like not the meat section, but like sandwich section where you can get all the mm-hmm. sliced, the, you know the deli meats. Yeah, the deli meats. Whatever. Anyway, you get what I'm talking about. And just get some turkey. Like and it's anything about the same thing. But it, it it could be a thing, and I guess it it works. I I. Uh, I no, don't... here's the thing: is if if I was if if I wanted a turkey loaf, uh, as a meatloaf sort of thing, I would get ground turkey and make my own. Well, I, I, I wouldn't. This product is a little different because it doesn't have anything else in it. Really. Yeah. I, and, and that's kind of where I can understand, like, the... the... I would still want to make my own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would get. I, I would just get ground turkey. I would, I would have an egg. I would probably be throwing some, some breadcrumbs in there. Oh, that reminds me. I need to add that to my Instacart. And I ran out of bread, breadcrumbs. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I get it. I don't like it. I don't think I would ever... If it if it showed up on like a a dinner table, I would I would probably take like a Make piece, a slice but it, to to try it, yeah, maybe, maybe like it's I great. would try it, and it you know, and I could be wrong. Like I'm sitting here in like I am I am I am prejudging it. I will own that I am making a a prejudgment on this on this mm, thing. Um, <laughs> I will own that. It is entirely possible that it is good. I don't think so, but <laughs> there's a possibility that it is good. And I will say if it happened to show up um, on a table and I asked what it was, and they're like, oh, it's turkey loaf. I got it, you know, made it. And I'm like, oh, that's that's nice. I would attempt to try it. Like, I would, I would... Because there's a possibility again that I'm, it like I said, it it is turkey, it's let's, let's, to me and gravy, it, it it has both of those things in it, it it is processed just the same as like like deli meats that you would get like from Oscar Mayer or whatever, like so it's not like it's anything that I haven't had before, so it's it's just in a obvious like. Congealed it's, it's loaf like form, spam. like yeah, it's you know, obvious, it's spam, but, but it is turkey. Although I think there's turkey spam. In any case, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. If I wanted a turkey loaf, I would get ground turkey and make my own turkey loaf. <laughs> I I, w- I would not buy a pre-made turkey loaf. I wouldn't buy a pre-made meatloaf. If I wanted meatloaf, I would just get make my own. Right, it's better. Um. But yeah, uh, mm. but yeah, I need to think of. I need to do my Instacart, and part of that should be the thing. What I've been kind of thinking was, uh, I got this slow cooker uh, uh, chicken pot pie. I mentioned this, I think, a, a few episodes mm-hmm. back. Yes, it was delicious, by the way. When when I made it, um, I think that would be a great base for a turkey dinner for mm-hmm. like a, a single person is basically make the, the pot pie soup get your mashed potatoes to kind of like put it on the side the side and you could kind of use it as like 
and then you get like biscuits. Mm. So you have biscuits and gravy. kind of like a. It would almost be kind of like turkey a la king. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like, huh? And you already got the it's vegetables not. and stuff. But one of the things I've been trying to think of, uh, I've been trying to develop a recipe in my brain, and it I haven't quite figured out how to do it. What I really would love to do is figure out the ultimate Thanksgiving casserole. Where it would, okay. and, it, and I'm not sure if it would somehow be layers. And then it's like, okay, so how and when do you put the cranberry sauce in there? <laughs> and um, where, and you... where, if we layer it, which layer is it? Is it something that you use as as kind of like the topper that you put at the end, like yeah, you, you cook you cook the the the, the potatoes the 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 chicken probably is chicken layer and uh, th kind of a thick gravy or something and then you put mm. pota potatoes and then you top it with stuffings and then you cook that and then either once you're done cooking you just like top it with cranberry sauce or do you actually add the cranberry sauce like last half hour or 15 minutes or something like that uh, and then it's kind of thinking like that, but looking all over the place for, for things. And there's lots of things saying like Thanksgiving leftover. And I'm like, no, I just want to like start fresh. I don't necessarily want this to like have to make everything first and then ha use the leftovers to do it. Well, um, I don't know. Like... Yeah, a turkey casserole, like a, a layered kind of dish. I don't, I don't know. There's so many different flavors and textures to a Thanksgiving meal. Sometimes that it might be. Or actually, that's. Let me rephrase. There are a few layers and textures to a Thanksgiving meal. You know, a lot of things at the end of the day can kind of become mushy. Just, just being honest. Let's be honest, y'all. Um, um, so a, a casserole, mm -mm, I don't know. I, I could see a few things in it, making it work. Obviously the turkey, some kind of stuffing or mashed potato kind of as the, the binder, maybe even combining the two, which mm, I don't know about that, but you know, that kind of idea. And then a vegetable or two, like green bean, or um, something along those lines. So, so um, this, is, this is how the the uh, the recipe that I found for Thanksgiving leftover casserole. And, and maybe this would be fine too, but uh, but you start off with uh, you've got a package of stovetop stuffing for turkey. Uh, four cups of chopped leftover roasted turkey. So I suppose you could just roast some turkey, chop it up. Um, uh, two cups of frozen mixed vegetables. Um, a th three quarters of a cup of mayo. Or Miracle Whip, it says. It's using branding. Um, uh, three cups of leftover mashed potatoes. A, a cup of sh shredded cheddar cheese. And an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. And you, you have like the, you combine the turkey, mixed vegetables, and mayo. Oh, wait a minute. So it's, so the layers are the stuffing, turkey, mixed vegetables, and mayo. Uh, and then top with the p potatoes and cheese on top. And then sprinkle with paprika and then and cook that. Okay. I don't know. That doesn't I, that doesn't feel right. Besides the fact that it doesn't have have uh, sauce, but maybe uh, the cranberry sauce, which maybe that's just something you add separately. I mean, I everyone's gonna kind of have their own take on it. I think so. 
I wouldn't be surprised if there's a whole series of different recipes to consider. He doesn't really talk about gravy either. Because I would kind of want to incorporate gravy in there somehow. Damon, I think you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Experiment. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> you can experiment and try to come up with your own. All right. So uh, now um, I, I, I need to get like several pounds of uh, turkey. <laughs> get one of those bulk packages of uh, 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 stovetop stuffing. Get like there a whole bunch of just to make things things a little bit easier. Get a whole bunch of those like instant mashed potatoes. Yeah, you know we are experimenting. Mm. Just go cheap and make it a little a little easier. Yeah, uh, uh, several cans of cranberry sauce because just again uh -oh. make it easier. Go with the 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 can to jelly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like. Bags and bags of mixed vegetables, <laughs> of frozen mixed ve vegetables. There you go. And then it's just a series. Oh, and maybe some jars of turkey gravy, just to make that easier. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do I need to test to, 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 to make this sort of thing? Yeah, that works. Oh, and huge bags of ch uh, cheddar cheese. Of shredded cheddar cheese. I can use that as kind of my binder. And oh, maybe some cans of uh, 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 cans of uh, cream of chicken soup. Mm hmm. Cozies. Anyways. Sorry. So, What's other foods. <laughs> I, have I covered everything when it comes to Thanksgiving foods? It's just that. that like, how do you build a Thanksgiving casserole? I mean, well, you just go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it, it's really a question of how you want to put it together because it kind of sounds like you're making like a seven layer dip thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then that that's all about like the physics of like food density and protein versus carb versus like coagulate and mm -hmm. like what is important where and if you like do you want the perfect bite every single time you take a bite like that's 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 a lot of undertaking yeah it is a it'll be a it'll be a gastronomical adventure uh, i will end up hating turkey probably <laughs> although what i'll probably end up hating I'll probably end up doing is get, getting the ingredients to make one and then came, getting the ingredients to make like my 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 Mexican tater tot casserole, uh, my my biscuits and gravy uh, casserole, uh, three sets of stuff for my my mac and cheese casserole because that is just uh, mm -hmm. and um yeah, and then you know, get get my things, and then my my little things here and there for for those kind of like filler things. Um, and yeah, there's a somebody revving their engine behind me. Otherwise, I don't hear any beeping. Yeah, so apologize for that. But I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, and then just kind of rotate through that. Mm. Ooh, yeah. I should. Th I also have to start thinking about what I want to do for Christmas. But maybe uh -oh. that's another. This is show. Thanksgiving. Yeah. This is Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Next month, we'll go over that. Welcome to Jeff's okay. brainstorm storming session for creating a Thanksgiving dinner casserole. Uh, sadly, I'm not equipped to to do a uh, video on making it, but yeah. Although maybe I could use and <laughs> just use my phone and then edit yeah. it all together. I've got a thing that's cheap yeah. I can put together. Uh, anyways. <sighs> Dinner. Well, um, I do have a question. 
I know we keep talking about Turkey. Uh-oh. But we're going to they're gonna go back to Turkey. Hold on to your pants, everybody. Here we go. Roasted, smoked, or fried. Are you talking about the people or the turkey? <laughs> the turkey. <laughs> like roasted turkey, smoked turkey, or deep fried turkey. Yes. <laughs> can you can you is there an option like D all of the above? Yes. I mean sure. <laughs> sure. But um I just it, it just came to my mind as like cuz tradition not traditionally in the past my family used to do roasted and then uh my uncle got a smoker. So we started doing a smoked turkey, and oh my god, good turkey. Um, and recently, my brother, who has been in charge of a turkey, um, has been doing a deep fried turkey. Mm-hmm. And they're popular enough that he's he was getting like orders from like coworkers like to do them because he had the you know ability to make them, um, and was probably I'm hoping making some good bank with that. Um, but um, it it was it was it's very interesting. Because the I think the last couple of years we've had the the deep fried turkey, and I personally am a big fan of deep fried turkey. Like I don't, it it tends to be of the three, the most moist, and depending on what you put on like the the skin of the turkey, it's usually the most flavorful. Mm-hmm. Not always, but it it can be. Um, but there's also the potential dangers of doing a deep fried turkey on your own. So um, that's been interesting. Um, FYI, everyone, if you are deep frying a turkey, make sure it is stalled completely before you put it in the fryer. Let me, let me say this. There is a Good Eats episode about frying turkey. Yeah, he, he goes a little. I, I I will admit that it is a little extreme, but I think it's perfectly a, a great idea for saying safe making a turkey, Derek. But he goes into this about making sure it's completely sawed. That you know, which you can do during the brining process. Uh, mm-hmm. he, you know, in in all the safety measures, do not leave your turkey unattended. Make sure mm-hmm. you have an, a, 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 a a fire extinguisher with you. I don't care if there's snow out when you when you do it. Do not do it mm-hmm. inside the house. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's away from flammable <laughs> for things that are flammable to, yeah. to prevent fire fire control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. is it is not easy. It is dangerous. But if you do it right. Have all the safety uh, precautions. Okay, get it to the right temperature and everything. Mwah. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, most of the time just said like roasted, but uh, but you know, if, if it's turkey, it probably would appeal to me in whatever way that was made. Yeah. So I mean, like I think like they, I guess that was kind of the answer. Like everyone likes it all. <laughs> um, I would think. Like, what have you had in relation to like your dinners? Um, but you know, that's fine. That's fair. I've had all. I've technically had all three. Um, one of the benefits. One of the. Um, uh, Things that we would have for at work, it was actually more for Christmas. We would have a no. Anyway, we would have food day, and one of the big things for our food day was that um, our bosses would um, get a a deep fried turkey, like order one, and then um, one of the guys that worked in our department would be in charge of carving it, and it would be a big. It was oh god, it was so good. I don't know where they got them from. I wish I knew. Anyway, but it was just like that was sort of like that was kind of my first 
like step into deep fried turkey and really loving it. And since then I've been like, yeah, I like deep fried turkey. Probably not the healthiest option, but yeah, good, good, good times. Yeah, I mean, um, I know I've had smoked turkey and I've had like oven roasted turkey many times. Mm -hmm. And I think I've had deep fried turkey. And to be honest, I don't recall any of them standing out to me in a way mm. that I was like, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I just. OK. Yeah. Like, But then again. Well, I don't know what to say. If it did make an impression on me for a memory, then I guess it was. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so I know we've mentioned a couple of times um, stuffing. Or what I would call dressing. Stuffing, dressing. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. words are pretty much interchangeable. I think some of the definitions between the, the difference between the two is one is put into the item that is being cooked, and one is created for the side and not actually put into the designated correct item. So, well, kind of the same thing. So I was watching a YouTube video, not actually watching it, listening to it while I was working today. Um, and um, Sola says that when she makes, or no, it wasn't Sola. Was it Sola? Hang on. I had YouTube on nonstop today. So I'm trying to think there's so many <laughs> chefs that we're all talking about various food things. And I guess, no, it must have been, um, oh, and I can't remember his name. He used to be with Bon Appetit. Anyways, there was an interesting point that they brought up about the difference between bread pudding and stuffing. Huh. Or dressing. Because they said that they had heard it was about the amount of egg that's used as a binder to hold it together. And hmm. if you were going to put a certain amount, of, like a, a certain percentage or proportion of egg into it you're actually going into like a bread pudding territory and not stuffing or dressing oh my and i thought that in and of itself was like the first i'd ever heard of this concept i have of never or not heard it's of that controversial and i because the whole thing is that they have three eggs for a traditional nine by 13 kind of casserole pan dish Mm -hmm. um, that they were making only, oh, I wish I could remember his name. It was, he was using Mexican ingredients. And so it was, mm. it was, um, meant to be savory, but sweet at the same time. And so he was going through this whole process, but he only used three eggs with a whole bunch of turkey stock. Um, and he, you know, whipped the three eggs, whole eggs, uh, in a bowl, uh, together. And once they were pretty well, uh, blended with a whisk, then he added the turkey stock and, you know, whipped all that up, uh, to be well blended. And then he used that to pour over the rest of the ingredients to mix together before putting in the pan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I never thought about that. I was like, oh, yeah, that really is interesting because bread pudding is literally the other side of the coin away from dressing or stuffing. That's Probably. like not put in a burp. Oh, God. It's a savory bread pudding, which there is such a thing in, in existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it just... Huh. It just kind of really made me so think. Because I don't, ooh, I don't, ooh. Because I don't think the, the, the dressing that we have at home, like, or that I look forward to every year um, at, my, at my Thanksgiving has any egg in it at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just, I'm looking up and I'm, I, I just found the, um, um, the Pioneer Woman's um, uh, Thanksgiving dressing stuffing recipe, and I don't see egg in that, but I am. It's also a recipe for cornbread. And if that, you know, if, for example, if the cornbread has egg in it, then I mean, I mean, guess the other breads potentially have cornbread in them or have egg in them too. But anyway. Um, interesting that is an interesting thought though you're gonna make me think gary like i'm like <laughs> like sitting here like right my oh. my mom has never given me my my grandpa's uh dressing stuffing recipe 
Mm. I think it's because every time I've asked, you says, well, he doesn't really have a recipe. And I'm like, yes, there is a recipe. It may not have like exact measurements or something. <laughs> it may not be like, written down. It, or, or written down, but there is a recipe. If you put ingredients together, <laughs> whether you're measuring them or not, it is a recipe. And if yeah. I got at least those basics, yeah, I could develop develop the more specifics when it comes to recipes. Mm -hmm. Well, and, Very... go ahead. So, well, what I was going to say is, like my grandmother, uh, my mother's mother, our stuffing slash dressing was always a sausage version. So it mm. uses sweet Italian sausage that you pan fry and crumble up. And then you take the sweet sausage out and you um, saute the celery and onions in the sausage fat that's left in the pan. And then you blend all of that with the um, dried bread cube. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, add your liquid and stuff like that. And that's my personal favorite um mm -hmm. version i like the contrast of like sweetie meat so to speak with mm -hmm. the savory bread and um that kind of stuff uh but you know that's that's the thing i'm thinking about already i'm like ooh, i'm gonna have to make that probably just for me <laughs> um just for you like make a smaller like dish version but yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I, I have my grandmother's recipe because I have her recipe, like collection, her mm. her index cards, like her recipe box, so to speak. So I just have to kind of make a, a look for for that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, <sighs> I still need to work on my my to 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 put all my recipes together in my uh, Google slides show which i'm using as my basis for res digital recipe cards it works well mm. because you know you got the you know what the slideshow looks like and it's just kind of like a recipe card except it's you know digital yeah a, a digital uh recipe box a okay the decks of deliciousness so we've talked about turkey and we've kind of talked about the stuffing dressing. Um, I kind of want to skip to the most important part of the meal, dessert. Dessert. God so, bless it. How adventurous are the two of you on taking classic Thanksgiving American like diet dessert things and and like twisting them in a different direction? Like flavor profile is still the same, but it's not the same sort of thing. Like because uh, Thanksgiving for me and my families have been pie, pie, and pie. <laughs> there is no such such thing as a cake at Thanksgiving. There oh, is no such honey, thing as a pudding. I'm so sorry. Oh, or, honey, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, or an see, ice cream. I'm not, I'm not much of a fan of of having. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of cake in general. Like there's yeah. times where I'll have cake and and they'll be be good, but. If I could have pie instead of cake, uh, I'd be, uh, I, I'm a happy boy. Um, but like, if you have like a pumpkin pie tart, calling it pumpkin pie, where it's like the pumpkin pie filling inside of a little tart mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would be kind of cool. Cause it's like a mini pumpkin pie itself, you know? Ooh. Yeah, I, I've you never know actually what? had that. I've always we just had pies because it was easier to, you know, have multiple people eat it. Um, we've been known to also serve uh, grasshopper pie. Mm -hmm. Grasshopper, as in related yes. to the drink grasshopper, not actual grasshoppers. Yes, you've explained grasshopper before. I know, but we met several new times. Lizards. That's okay. You can tell them which episodes to go back and listen to. Or, <laughs> better yet, they could just go to CubsOutloud.com and they could type in the search field, Grasshopper Grasshopper. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure David has, like, key tagged the, that son of a bitch every time that it's been brought up. <laughs> just like all the other foods in this episode, for that matter, technically. Possibly. I was trying to do, I did a Thanksgiving, like, hashtag search and I realized, ooh, we I was, I was just doing the disclaimer for new listeners. <laughs> I'm not going into it. 
but it's it's that and it, having a nice apple pie i think i think the idea when it comes to uh uh, uh pies and and baked goods at this time of year is just the kind of uh thematic of the harvest fall you you think of these things like like apples and uh, uh squash and, and, and pumpkin and and that sort of thing uh, during this time of yeah. year versus versus any other type of year where you would like have a strawberry pie that's yeah. more like a spring mm-hmm. thing you know mm-hmm. uh, or, or well, even summer but so in answer to Gary's question um I would be fine with being adventurous Desserts to me have always been like a a fun place to play. I love baked goods in general, so like give me whatever. Um, yesterday for the dinner, Jim made a um, instead of a pumpkin pie, um, he made a pumpkin cheesecake, uh, which is really fucking good. You know, yes, it's kind of similar ish to the thing, but it was a a different take on it, and it was really good. Um, I, the thing that just came in my head for some reason, I don't, don't know if it's a thing. If it is, I, I will ha- I will gladly eat it. Um, something along the lines of a pumpkin brownie, like combining like a chocolate and a pumpkin kind of flavor. I've had the pumpkin chocolate chip cookies from um, Kroger. They make those usually around this time. Um, but like that kind of idea just kind of hit me. Um, uh one of the things my mom always gets um, for the Thanksgiving dinner dessert side is she will almost always get a jam cake, um, which usually has a caramel frosting. Um, and it is a, if I'm remembering correctly, it's usually a spice cake, like two, like it's a two layer spice cake. But the middle in between the two is a a jam of some kind, like a usually a like a raspberry or a blackberry, because I remember it because I always had to pick up the seeds. Well, not pick up the seeds, but I could feel the texture of seeds in like the jam. Um, but it does always use it. It is super fucking sweet. So I usually don't. I've not been eating it recently because um, when you're a kid, it's fine. <laughs> when you grow up. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it doesn't have a jam in it. Maybe I am wrong. Well, so nope. there is something out there called the jam cake. Actually, there's a Kentucky jam cake or a Kentucky blackberry yeah. jam cake, which I had never heard of before, which is why yeah. I was all sorts of faces in the YouTube. <laughs> because I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah, what is what is this thing and, I've never heard this of? Is, this is, I'm reading the description, and that is what I remember. Thank you, now, Wikipedia. according to SpicySouthernKitchen.com, uh, this says um, Southern cake is a special dessert at any time of year and is very popular for Christmas. Whatever. Um, <laughs> what makes this cake so special is blackberry jam that's mixed into the cake batter. Ah. Uh, has lots of spice, cinnamon, allspice, and cloves, and it has like chopped walnuts on the top of it. But it does say that it has a caramel icing thing. Yeah, it looks that, it looks yummy. I just yes. I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's something to think about. But it is one of the things like I remember specifically that she would always uh, either order or I mean usually she would order it because um, she didn't have the patience to make a cake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, oh my! I love my mom, but no, yeah, she was not a fan of picking cakes. Right. Um, so that in particular, I remember her always getting. Um, oh, that sounds so good! And now I want a jam cake. I normally wouldn't, but since we're not gonna have Thanksgiving at all this year, like I think that's gonna be one of the ones I'm gonna miss the most. Um, gonna have to meet the other pretty, thing. Man. Ha 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 ha! You're funny. Um, <laughs> um, uh, this is a but joke. the other you're gonna have to like. Are you saying you can't can't cook? Can't measure ingredients? I am. I am saying. I am saying that I have inherit inherited the lack of patience that my mother has in regards to baking. 
Um, I can do certain things. Like I could, if you want me to make like a cake from like a mix, no problem. Got it. Good. We're good. But making a cake and doing it from scratch, stop it. <laughs> making a cake from scratch. No, I don't think I could do that. Getting, Stop getting it. Saved. <laughs> getting saved getting, from Jim, right? I'm getting saved from the from Jim in the kitchen. Wow. Love Mwah. But um <laughs> yeah. But um Or maybe Jim can make it for you. We'll see. It, it find uh, the recipe. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not I'm not too, I mean, I'm not too worried about it, but it is what it is. What it, it can get very sweet, especially like with a caramel icing on top of a cake with like jam and spices right. and whatnot. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it is like not. A, that's like one of the shortcuts that you, that you could do instead of like for the uh, for the icing you know, on the top uh, or uh, on the cake. You could probably just get like like the jarred like thing to get. To get, yeah. To get, and then all you need to do is spread it on with a spatula, you know. Yeah. Uh, that that should be that you can easily easily do. It's usually just the baking of the actual, you know, cake where it, it mm -hmm. gets a little more stuff. And you also need a cake pan. <laughs> we have those Jim parchment those. paper to make it yep, easier yep, yep, to, to yep. take out. The you know, um, nice long slicing knife. Yeah. I'm sure we have all of those things. Jim makes spectacular things for well, sure. What do we have? <laughs> As he asked. Um, cake pans and a knife to cut a cake, sweetie. Yeah, shit. You don't have those, not at all. I've got cake pans. I've got bread for cake pans. I've got cake pans. Somebody on outside spatula. I'm not going to find bread. <laughs> Jim, exactly. will you marry me? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> I mean, he can't hear me, so. <laughs> to be fair, Jeff, he hasn't even married the one that lives in his house yet, so, like, and, 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 I'm thinking there's a priority he's been dating there. for, like, what, 15, 16, 17, yeah. how long has it been now? 17. 13 years? I'm Seven, sorry, I can't really see that fan, given, like, the background effect thing. Uh huh. Yeah, See, that's what I thought. Seventeen, by the way. Seventeen years that he still hasn't put a ring on it. Anyway, or vice well, versa. To clarify, or we don't versa. know that, and and like, there's lots of different interpretations of rig, and that. <laughs> <laughs> I think David just did a spit take. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, anyway. So speaking of desserts, um, I, I just Gary. need a shade fan as a prop for myself. <laughs> not not one that I'm going to frequently use, but on this show, I find that I really need, should have one handy. So here's here's what I was kind of thinking of when I asked this question, like a perhaps a pecan praline um inspired spiced roll cake mm -hmm. with like yeah. a whipped cream uh you know uh mm -hmm. in the roll or a pumpkin mousse uh with bourbon uh like you know um kind of like in little cups and stuff with you know yeah. a spiced um whip topping like that's what i yeah. mean like they're fall, they're autumnal, mm -hmm. like could be Thanksgiving, you know, yeah. but they're they're a little different, you know. Yeah. Like one of our yesterday, one of the guys made a or brought either made it or brought it or both. I don't know. I know they brought it. I don't know if they made it. Um, a bourbon um, cake uh, with pecans in it. And I didn't eat it out of spite because he wasn't supposed to bring dessert. Um <laughs> 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 <Girl>! <laughs> Wait, wait, Every, so, wait, so, wait, no, this is, this is I me. I think I misunderstood <laughs> what you said, because what I heard was I did not eat it out of spite because they were not supposed to bring it. That was correct. Okay. <laughs> they weren't supposed to bring Explain dessert. Explain yourself. It was not, <laughs> they were, they were not tasked with bringing dessert. Jim okay. was tasked with bringing a dessert 
and he oh, made a really okay. delicious pumpkin cheesecake and spent a lot of time on it. And then out comes this fucking bourbon cake that someone brought that they weren't they weren't supposed to be bringing. And it starts getting cut up, and no one is even talking about the fucking per- the pumpkin cheesecake that was brought specifically and was asked for. You know, by someone. So fuck that. Like I, I'm, I'm, I am a petty bitch. I will be that bitch because <laughs> the guy literally like cut it up and put out slices, and he brought some over, and he was like, "Do you want one?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> like I didn't. hashtag not surprised. <laughs> but wait, like, but what did you say besides no? I said no, thank you. Did you say anything else? I didn't say anything else, no. Okay, see, you're not that petty. Because if I was the petty bitch, I would have said, no, actually, I would like some of the cheesecake that my man brought. I requested. Thank you very much. Oh, that came That's later. That's what I'm going to have for dessert. And, and, you know what it, and you know what it would, put, what would have put a point on it? Is if you said, it said that the cheesecake that my husband brought me. But, you know, that wasn't the case anyways. Yeah. I was going to, like, I did later ask for the, because I was waiting for the cheesecake to be brought out. And I was a little mad that no one had even considered bringing it out yet when we were talking about dessert. (sighs) Anyway. See, another way you could have thought about it is you could have been like, I'm sorry, I'm gay, and I love the Golden Girls. I would like a slice of cheesecake. Oh, <laughs> it just so happens my man that I share and live my life with brought one. Uh-huh. How convenient. Category is petty. <laughs> <laughs> is that the whole tr- hashtag category is petty? Or is no. It- category <laughs> is one petty. hashtag, and then second hashtag petty. is petty. Petty, okay. yes. I I just wanted to clarify. There's got to be a drag queen out there somewhere in the world called Petty Bitch. I'm sure. I am sure. Yeah. You're going to make me look it up. (laughs) So. Which, if she ever gets on RuPaul's Drag Race, she'll be forever known as Petty B. Because we got to change change people's names, you know, because we got to adultify them for the children's in the world, apparently. Anyways. Or or or, or or there could be uh, there could be a, uh, just one of a, a like pair, like a, a duo uh, group drag queen. Not something that would obviously would not go would wouldn't be on RuPaul's Drag Race, but you would have have uh, Cat Igori and Petty Bitch. Anyway. Anyway, uh, so yeah, but anyway, petting this aside, I probably would have enjoyed the cake, but <laughs> yeah, Jim had some and he liked it, so I'm pretty sure it, I would have enjoyed it. I just was not going to have it. Um, uh, I would, I, the, it really honestly it doesn't matter to me like dessert like there's traditional staples pumpkin pie apple pie pecan pie um sweet potato pie like those are kind of like the general like thanksgiving staples at our house um my aunt actually makes a banana pudding another when i'm younger was great now that i'm older holy fucking shit this is like sugar Pancreas says no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, I, I love my. I mean, she's gotten better in recent years, but like, it had been a while, and I just like it was dessert time, so I like put like a a piece of like not everything, but just about everything, on a plate to have. I'm like, oh, here's some some sweet potato pie. Here's some um, pumpkin pie. Here's a bit of the jam cake holy fucking shit that's sweet wow that is super sweet and then i went to the banana pudding and you you felt your teeth already but I, yes <laughs> every single if i mean i know it's been a while since i've been to the dentist but like i felt every single like 
nerve and cavity or whatever that I may not have or may have or is yet to come in my mouth at that moment when I put this damn banana pudding in my mouth. And don't get me wrong, if it wasn't so overpoweringly sweet, it would be good. Like, cause it's not, it's, it is bananas and the pudding and there's layers of, of, I'm assuming the vanilla wafers like in it, like she, she, she like layers it. So it is very like tasty and, and complex in like the, like the texture, but it's like she made it or she made the pudding and then took like a thing of sugar and just went Whoo, and it's not there because it's just so, just so awfully sweet. And well, I, it has gotten better in the in recent years because I think because you know a lot of our family is diabetic. Soccer. Um, <laughs> well, imagine yeah, that. That gets an issue. Uh, a quick question in regards to to the pies. What were the, the four pies? You had pumpkin, apple, uh, pecan, and I said, I said sweet potato. Sweet potato was the last one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet potato. Of um, of those, which ones do you ac do you actually like? Because I will not eat sweet potato or uh, pecan or pecan pie, um, uh, but apple uh, and I'm I'm good with with the apple and the uh, pumpkin. pumpkin. Um, if I mentioned it, I eat it. Okay. <laughs> so nice. And if obviously, I would I would, mouth, I would I would actually add grasshopper in. pie to, to to that. Have you have it, yeah. have you guys ever had grasshopper pie? Just serious. No, we've discussed this we before. Try it. Yeah, we but like and I will... said that many times. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but I will say this much: like, if you if I had to rank the pie, like mm -hmm. I could only have one. Like, there's a slice left, and there's three people in the line. Like, if I had to have one, nine times out of ten, I'm going to reach for the pecan because I like pecan pie so much. Um, I'm just not. But that's just me. Was, I think that's probably. And it's a it's kind of a thing. If you're not a fan of the like the nutty yeah. like a nutty flavor, or the if you're not a fan of, um, it's not. Is it a custard? Would it be considered a custard pie? Mm. So it's not really a custard pie. No. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm, I'm thinking now because I'm trying to figure out like what is what is that stuff that's in the middle. The <laughs> filling. Yeah, it's just a filling. Okay. Thanks, sweetie. Um, yeah, it is. It's technically a variant of a chess pie, um, mm -hmm. which is usually a butter, egg, and sugar custard. Yeah. Yeah. So like... it's not it's not a cream custard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is probably where we got hung up for a moment. Yeah, that makes sense. Good to know. Yeah, because I love chess pie too. Yeah. So. In Canada, they have a dessert that I am now very intrigued by. Mm -hmm. uh, that's called a Nanamu bar. It's a dessert bar that requires no baking. Hmm. That comes from uh, the city in, that is named after in British Columbia. It consists of three layers, a wafer, nut, and coconut crumb base. So mm -hmm. if you're not a coconut person, that probably like lost it for you. Um <laughs> Custard icing in the middle, and then a layer of a chocolate ganache on top. And then the custard in the mm -hmm. middle can sometimes be different flavors like mint, peanut butter, coconut, or mocha. And then, of course, there's different kinds of chocolate that you could do. But it's basically kind of like a bar cookie uh, deal, but you probably mm -hmm. make it. I don't, I remember the full thing, but like I imagine you make it like in a casserole dish and then you just cut it into bars and like serve it out that way. But I was like, mm -hmm. what is this? Like, <laughs> It sounds interesting. I will give it that much. I would probably try it, even though it has coconut in it. I would at least give it a try. Because um, it it again. lost me with it lost me with the coconut, but it won me with the chocolate ganache. <laughs> so, like, I'm like, okay, maybe like a Samoa, which I could eat, because I fucking love Samoas. Mm. But, um, but like, yeah. Oh, ooh, that looks good. See? <laughs> For those that don't know what's happening, I put it into our Skype chat. Um, 
apparently at a 2016 U.S. state dinner in honor of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. This was featured as the main dessert here in the U.S. at the dinner that was honoring him. So let's hear it for uh, former U.S. President Barack Obama and his wife Michelle Obama because they made a point of blending together American and Canadian dishes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. That's the thing. Okay. Huh. 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 Okay. So... Yeah. Um, Do you like, yeah. uh, speaking of uh, uh, desserts, uh, when it comes to desserts, do you like a Malamode? Oh, oh, man, you. So oh. this is a controversial <laughs> thing for people. And I say it like this yes. because I have seen people kind of get up in arms about a la mode pie being hot or cold mm -hmm. because ice cream is cold usually mm -hmm. <laughs> and so some people think an a la mode pie should be heated and then the ice cream is added to it so you get the contrast of the warm pie and the cold ice cream and right here. the most common thing <laughs> David Dave is one of them apparently so like apple pie is the most like common I can think of that you would have mm -hmm. a la mode um, yeah. Usually with like a vanilla uh, ice cream, I think is is the typical. Mm -hmm. um, I am not one of those people. Like I, I don't have this purist kind of thing about that. I'm kind of like ice cream and pie. Sure. Like I've actually had milkshakes made out of pies. Like it don't bother me none. Like I don't need to, you know, be all, mm -hmm. um, you know, formal mm -hmm. about Milk, stuff. Milkshake out of a pie is a, is a different thing. Could be a different thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's not it's, much it's different. different. You literally dish. put ice cream and a, pie, a slice of pie in a blender. You pour some <laughs> milk in. You put the lid on that bitch. You hit puree and let it run. Yeah, and but now it, you have a pie flavored. Yeah, milkshake. but then it's then it's a milkshake. It's not a pie a la mode. Um, Dustin actually comments uh, uh, pecan yes pumpkin no uh, for that. Uh, I don't like a la mode at all. And if I See, do, if I do want both of them, I don't want them on the same plate. So I will have <laughs> pumpkin pie and ice cream, but I want the pumpkin pie on a plate, ice cream in a bowl, ice cream in a bowl, yep, separate. So cake, same thing. I will have them together. I'm I'm okay. I like both. If I I like both of them, I'm gonna eat both of them. It's it's the a la mode part where you put the ice so, cream basically on the thing. No, separate. So wait 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 wait. Are you that? Are you that but person? That's me. At a that's birthday me. party when they pass around birthday cake with ice cream that you don't want them on the same plate because they're touching. I will usually tell them before they serve me. I'll say, hey, can I have that on the side, please? Yeah, you know, I'll be polite about it. What do you mean on the side? And a lot of the times, and a lot of the times, they'll ask. They'll be like, "Hey, do you want some ice cream with your with your cake or with your pie?" Uh, I'll say, "I would like some ice cream, but can I have that in a bowl or on a separate plate or something like that?" You know, I'll keep so, them separate. Uh, I I'm polite enough, uh, but yeah. And and if it, for some reason I have no choice, I'll still eat it. It's just not my preferred method of eating it. Yeah. So, um. Okay. <laughs> Cake and ice cream, no. Like, it's not my thing. Because usually, it, if the cake is is warm, and even if the cake is warm, like you've got the frosting, I don't, I don't, I don't need like another like sweet ice cream element on top of it, kind of thing. Um, high a la mode, no. Um. Not usually. I prefer a whipped cream on a pie than I do to an actual um, um, ice cream. And if, but if I do have to or can do a a la mode in some ways, it has to be a frostingless cake. Um, and the cake has to be warm. 
because what I'm wanting is like that meltiness of the ice cream to kind of give me the feeling of the frosting in a sense. Like a brownie alamo uh, would be, be just yeah. fine. A brownie alamo would be just fine for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, pie alamo, no. I would, it would have, they would have to be separate, like cake and, and our pie and ice cream on the side. Um, the only <laughs> quote unquote, like, change after that is like an actual ice cream cake. And oh, even that's then, not even, <laughs> even then, <laughs> that's a little hard to hell mode. Well, I mean, no, I'm because t- it's ice cream and cake. It's ice cream together. Like I'm thinking ice cream and cake. Like that's my usual issue, but that's the only difference. And even then, I'm usually eating the ice cream first, and then I'll eat the cake. Like, because in my opinion, usually an ice cream cake is served chilled or frozen because it has to be because it keeps the ice cream together. By the time I usually eat all of the ice cream, the cake has thawed or cooled down enough to where it's not like freezing and I can then eat the cake. I think most of the ice cream cakes I've had have been just basically pure ice cream in a, some sort of cake form. Yeah. Um, I don't somehow, think I've really had any actual cake in it. Ba- Basket Robbins, I, I think, used to make an ice, an ice cream cake where it was a layer, the same thing. a layer of cake then a layer of ice cream and it was covered in frosting. And we used to get them for our birthdays every year growing up when they came out because they were so popular. Mm. So yeah, anyway, but that's, you know, that's me. Like a brownie. Yeah, I mean, I just, I really fucking good right now. I'm a, I'm a sweets kind of person, so it, it don't bother me. Like, you want to put ice cream on that? You want to put whipped cream on that? You want to put nuts on my face? Sure. Like, I mean, I'm not really, you know. <laughs> you're not, you're, 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 you don't mind. No, you don't mind. No double entendre at all. No, not at all. <laughs> you don't mind, and you don't mind the nuts I was, on your face. I, I know what I said. I, I meant you, it. You want the cream? <laughs> I just whipped cream, ice cream, just all up in the face. Don't, well, don't, don't I mean, care. white stuff. Right. I guess I'm just not that kind of a particular person, and I've I've been more of the kind that was like, it's all going the same place basically. So, mm-hmm. like, which is one of the reasons why I love casseroles. So a couple, well, but then that is the confounding part about you, Jeffrey, because of the whole ice cream on the side thing. <laughs> so. Well, the thing is, if it's all going the same place, it doesn't matter. The, the only thing is that that usually casseroles are a different type of thing. If I'm, you know, casseroles, casseroles are like oh. main dish, uh, as partial oh. side dishes thing. So mm. for me, like, I mean, a couple of years ago, my dad and I went to this convention uh, that he's been a member of, like, since before I was born. Um, and it has to do with beer in the brewing process. And we go to breweries and we went to one that had on their menu a milkshake that included beer that they made. And I was willing to try it. And I can't forget how many people, grown adults, all mostly of a generation older than me, were like, what? Like they were just <laughs> confounded by this concept. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand what the big deal is. Like, you'll eat ice cream that has beer in it, but the concept of a milkshake that has beer in it is like a weird thing. Like, I had to point that out to them. I was like, okay, for the record, like, y'all enjoy ice cream from Yangling that is made with Yangling beer. Mm-hmm. But we're not really stretching too far outside of that wheelhouse we're, so we're to just... me it's not it's not that big a deal i'm like i'm like oh okay like you want to now to be fair like i'm not crazy adventurous like i don't want to try thanksgiving dinner milkshake that's <laughs> probably going a little that's too gonna be far. a pass 
that, well, that'll because be a path now for we're, you. Now we're really pushing the boundaries of the whole savory sweet blending thing. Yeah. Like Fact. a cranberry milkshake, I could probably be down with. Um, yeah. But a, you know, if you're throwing in turkey and yeah, right, and 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 I already the, have the... I already have a, a revulsion to cold potatoes, like just mm -hmm. across the board, mm -hmm. makes me gag. Yes, I have a gag reflex. Um, <laughs> like in, I just in, in certain situations, no, but <laughs> it's a gag reflex. No, no, all the time. I have a gag reflex. Wow. It's never gone okay. away. Uh, <laughs> you can draw that, that's not a brag. That's just that's just a statement. Like, and I figured out it was cold potatoes. Like, I grew up as a child hating, hating, despising potato salad. Mm -hmm. Could never ever understand that why people would eat it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And my mother could not understand why I never wanted potato salad. She thought it was the strangest thing about me. It was like the one food that I would just never tolerate or touch. Mm -hmm. And. I always thought it was gag worthy. Like literally, it would make me gag and like yeah. like get sick. No, that's not so. I like it, but I, I can see why somebody else would. But it wasn't until I was an adult and I was living um, prior to here at the uh, the previous uh, home that I lived that I shared a house with um, my friend uh, who owned the house, and we were roommates. And I had leftover breakfast from something. I don't know where it was. It might have been. Um, Heck, it might have been from Lucky's in, in Tremont in Cleveland, uh, mm. Damon. Like, it was hash uh -huh. brown type potato stuff. And I heated it up in the microwave, and I'm standing in the kitchen, and I am eating it, and I'm near the trash can, and I took a bite from the middle, and the potatoes were cold because it had been refrigerated. Uh -huh. And it no sooner than went into my mouth that I was like, Bleh! like, <laughs> and I'm just like spitting it out into the trash can. And I was like, what the hell is the matter with me? <laughs> like, it I was love just this shit from Lucky's. Like, what the fuck is going on? No, no, right, right. But it was so instantaneous. <laughs> like, it was like, I could not control my, my, my reflex, like my body. It was body, the or like, something? It, yeah. Right, it was the potatoes. It was the, you know, their smashed home fry style uh, potatoes. And all of a sudden, everything came into focus, and I went, oh, this is why I hate potato salad. <laughs> because the potatoes were cold. Like, and I don't know what it is about that. Like, I just, I, I can't. Like, I've mm. never, so like, mm. like, for example, french fries, if french fries get cold, I'm like, nope. And I don't mm -hmm. mean cold, refrigerated cold. I just mean like, colder. Cold. Yeah, cold. Yeah. yeah like, 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 like you picked it up from McDonald's. Donald's, you spend 10, 15 minutes to get home, and then by the time you get home, they're cold, and then you're like, well, I can't eat these. Well, anymore. no, that, uh, that's, they're not warm yet. Like, they're they're cooling off, but I mean, like, if they've been sitting for, like, 20 minutes to a half an hour. Yeah. Like, I get uh, it. I get that. Yeah. Get that. Like, get that. I'm like, cool, like, I can yeah. eat them. I'm really unhappy about them. <laughs> <laughs> just lukewarm. But, yeah, like I just, uh, I don't know. Mm. So I, that's where you know when we were talking about my like abomination concept of a Thanksgiving dinner milkshake. I'm like, no, because you're gonna put mashed potatoes in that bitch, and they're gonna be cold potatoes, and that's a no. So that's a no for, you. That's a no for me. Like, no. <laughs> it's the cold mashed potatoes for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the but like I grew up and I had very infrequently German potato salad. And yeah. that's served hot, mm -hmm. and it usually has like a sweet, vinegary, like kind of you know binder, um, you know, with bacon and stuff. And I'm like, I can I can eat that shit up no problem. But I've realized like it's two things. One, it like hits my wheelhouse because I like I like sour vinegary foods, mm -hmm. so I don't have a problem with that. And it's potatoes, duh, and it's hot. So you know, oh, and yeah. for bacon. So you know, yeah. I mean, it just kind of comes all together. All right. Anyways. By the way, you can cook a uh, turkey in a slow cooker. Um, I did that one. Then. <sighs> See, I don't know, honey. I don't know. Mm. It worked. It worked. I think you can I, do a ton of things in a slow cooker. You have to be willing for the adventure. <laughs> Yeah. It, 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 again, this is this is a part where your patience in in cooking uh, is is non-existence. 
uh, well, I can I can in. deal with a slow cooker like meal. Mm. I'm fine with that. I'm just thinking more along the lines. Like for me, there's a there's a texture issue with regards to the skin that's going to be a problem for me. Because right, I mean, it turned out like, well. It's and not I, gonna... I I don't think that I actually deal with the skin much when it comes yeah. to to turkey. I'm usually yeah, yeah. Uh, just you know I I dig it out, pull, peel the skin off. If it is that crispy one, sometimes I'll I'll start uh, chowing down on it. But to me, I don't really care about the skin. I need the skin much. to be crispy or crisper. It can't just or not no skin at all. Like I'm just gonna like mm -hmm. give me middle pieces of the of the breast and I'm good. I don't if I don't if the skin's not cooked well enough to where it's that's why I guess maybe that's why I like deep fried so much is usually the skin gets pretty like yeah because harder. it's getting uh, it's fried cooked. yeah so, fried so but like but other than that no mm -hmm. like so the idea of a slow cooker turkey I can understand it working in theory yeah I put the rest it's kind of like roasting because it's like roasting it essentially mm -hmm. you know in a way it's, I don't know it, it's eh. a very mm -hmm. moist uh, cooking method. Yeah, and that's like that's my challenge. Like, I like a moist turkey, for sure. You know, you also need to have a crock pot that's big enough to to fit whatever turkey you get. Also, that <laughs> that's um, important. I, I think uh, when I did it, it was like a little too big, or it just wasn't fitting quite right for my size of crock pot. But it turned out perfectly fine, so I wasn't too worried about it. Um, but that that's something to do, but. Yeah, if you're you're home, just think of things portioning. Mm -hmm. Don't have to. You don't have to get too much. Um, feel free to make yourself easy. Go with the instant mashed potatoes. Yeah, they're not going to be as but as good as uh, regular mashed potatoes. But if you don't have the appropriate things to make full potatoes, you know you get those big those big Idaho russets and uh, uh, try making those. That's a lot of work, so just go with yeah. this. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, grab it. Grab a can of uh, a cream of your your jellied cranberry sauce and grab the stovetop stuffing. Kill me now. I mean, do you do you want to take the sauce. Damon? Do you want to take the time of making actual real cranberry sauce with real cranberries? I'd rather just I'd rather just have cranberries. Right, like, just just pop them in your mouth, kind of like <laughs> yeah, like like. I mean, no, okay. Let's let, let's let's. I don't need cranberry sauce. Period. Got it. Got it. <laughs> like I kind of figured that's what that was about. Yeah. Skip the cranberry um, sauce. We had this conversation. We had this conversation. I had this conversation yesterday. By the way, when my the savoriness of my meal, what, what? of the Thanksgiving meal, there's only one thing that needs to be sweet, and that is usually the sweet potato, like casserole or whatever. The, the thing is, uh, is that cranberries have a bitter sweetness, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It does. So, which and which kind of counteracts it? So, nah, but, and then me. I don't know. It's it's kind of having that multiple flavors. Um, mm. I recommend sticking with when it comes to veggies, uh, sticking with a green beans. Uh, but I also enjoy carrots, cooked carrots. Mm -hmm. um, I I actually prefer them cooked. I like uh, raw carrots, but I prefer having cooked. Nice salad. Yeah. It's always good. My my favorite is Western dressing with uh, uh, blue cheese, uh, although it is practically impossible to get Western dressing. This is, it is was originally by a brand called Western, and they labeled it as French dressing, but it was bought out by Wishbone, and it's now just as listed as Western dressing. Mm -hmm, uh, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like this balance between like oh, with the more common French sense. dressing and Russian dressing. 
Stop. Very, I don't want all delicious. these fucking ads. I'm trying to just read the recipe. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm paying attention. I was trying to look at this slow cooker Thanksgiving recipe, and I keep getting pop-ups. Like, Yeah, all recipes kind of, like... Yeah. It's great, but also it was a pain uh, at times. But I, I use the resource. Yeah. But, hey, anyway. there's a lot to do. Anyways, I think, I don't know about you, but I think everybody should uh, make sure that they got their pumpkin pies and uh, as we finish the show. How does that sound? Or do you have any other final thoughts before we move on? I mean, I just feel like, you know, enjoy enjoy your holiday festivity, whatever that thing may be. Hell, if you decide that Taco Bell is your gig, then then get at it, you know? Yeah. Agreed. Um, oh, this... uh, actually, I do have one more thing. I saw this ad today on YouTube, and I would have sworn it was from The Onion or College Humor or something. Apparently, Arby's and a marketing stunt has released a turkey pillow. This, David, have you seen this thing? Yes. This pillow is a hat that goes over your entire head. It looks like a life-size roasted turkey that you mm. stick your head in, and then apparently you wear it when you go to take your turkey tryptophan coma nap after <laughs> Thanksgiving. And this fucking pillow cost $65. <laughs> I watched this ad before a YouTube video because I was so distracted. <laughs> I was like, what is the fuck this? Is this? Could not believe, believe my eyes. I can't believe it's actually a fucking thing. <laughs> well, that, I'm not That surprised. Arby's deep fried turkey pillow from SNL is a very real product. from Appa SNL. Apparently SNL must have had a I don't know if they SNL must have had a segment where they had joked about something like this and then Arby's actually made it into a product. Oh god. Enter for a chance to win this pillow. Get a coupon. <laughs> Try it on now. Use your mobile device to see how the Arby's stylish deep fried turkey pillow fits your style. Is, it, is that really stylish? I I, I don't know. No. Too bad I it's just, already sold out. Is it? Damn. <laughs> this is according this to link in the uh, art Boing Boing. Boing for the website. <laughs> oh, God. This looks like it's... a bizarre parody ad, but it's real. It's originally scheduled to run during the last last week's Saturday Night Live, but ultimately did not. Arby's produced a pillow that fits over your head and resembles a deep-fried fried turkey. Too bad it's already sold out. If you still crave this pillow, you can enter a sweepstakes to win one. Happy napping. How many did they make, though? I don't know, but apparently it's already sold out. Arby's well, deep-fried turkey ship, pillow. pillow it com. will ship after 11.26. And I'm like, so you're not going to give it on Thanksgiving. Stock, so. So. Right, so it's shipping after no, after Thanksgiving. That doesn't help. Good. Anyway, I that's just, some shit. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just, girl, I can't. I just, I can't. I don't. I don't even like. Uh, and it's wait, sixty dollars on the website instead yeah. of sixty-five. With that, um, uh, I think that's the end. <laughs> Way to end the show. Like sleeping inside a cozy turkey, an aunt. Because <laughs> who has it? You know, covers half of your face with a turkey. turkey. Approved claim by an Arby's lawyer. <laughs> anyway, we're done. We're good. Let's go. Arby's, you have the meats. I love you so much. Anyways, 
My ways to contact us, Papa Rudor website, CubsOutLive.com. Uh, shoot us an email at CubsOutLive at gmail.com. Uh, voicemail 361C, we'll talk to 361-265-8255. Or on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLive in the appropriate place of the URL. This is the... Oh, I'm done. Boys. <laughs> Join our entourage chat, which somehow I had left. And I had to come back. I'm no longer an admin, by the way. Um, uh, that's at tinyurlcom slash telegram dash col. That's how I got back in. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning to do these shows. Once we have them planned. Uh, at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get various merchandise, such as a Cubs Out Loud hat or sweatshirt that Gary is wearing. In fact, Gary, I think, is the only one wearing our merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> At Zazzle.country-specific, uh, uh, top-level domain, uh, slash Cubs Out Loud, so Zazzle.com, etc. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, I really would like to get a green screen just because it would be fun and probably look better than seeing my old apartment um that's kind of a goal we're looking for uh you can help support that at patreon.com slash cups out loud and other upgrades i'm just mentioning the one um and if you want to just uh, send them some cash you can go to paypal.me slash cups out loud uh, you can rate us on iTunes, or rate us on Apple Podcasts. It's not iTunes, it's called Apple Podcasts now. Uh, uh, Google Play, which is becoming YouTube something. I don't know. YouTube Music? I don't uh, understand the whole thing. But it's the Google Podcasts. Uh, uh, also, Amazon and Audible. I actually was on Audible uh, uh, selecting my book for the monthly credit. Today, and then I decided, oh, I'm going to search out Cubs Out Loud. And there it was. Nice. Yay. Uh, as well Yay. as the Amazon Music Service. Find me anywhere in the internet. It's Box Up Box Puppy Box Cub Box. Something or other. Uh, also, Wind Gym on Twitch, where we play BND, which is Bears and Dragons, which is us playing Dungeons and Dragons. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as um, TheaterCub79 on most bear-related sites or on uh, Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well, take it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.